Adiós. Welcome back to 120 Minutes. I'm Matt Pinfield. Joining me right now is Tom York from Radiohead, and we're at Radio City Musical. Tom, it's great to have you back on the air again. Yeah, nice to see you, man. You know what I mean? Nice and, to see you. And I, th I really want to thank you for coming down. Um, man, we haven't seen each other, I guess, in about a year. It's gonna, uh, it's gonna be a year in June. Yeah, since, uh, probably. Yeah, we're playing out or so. No, actually, that's not true. Actually, I've seen you since then, but I mean, we've done something on the professionally. Air. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and. Um, Let's talk a bit about the fact that OK Computer, when we were talking about when it was recorded, uh, and since then it's been on so many best of lists, and you know it's been acclaimed album of the year. You've won all these Radiohead best uh, bands, best new band nominated yeah. for a Grammy. How is that as a ride for you guys? Well, that, it, 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 that's exactly what it was. <laughs> it was. It was. It wasn't. A, you know. You know when they have sometimes they have like dream sequences or nightmare sequences where you just keep going through different. Um, it's diff different events, like, you know, your life flashing before your eyes. Yeah. I mean, that was happening every day. You know, when we did the Tibetan festival and stuff, you know, um, I mean, that, that particular weekend for us was completely mind-blowing, you know, and, and it, was, it was really weird. It was, it was suddenly we were in a completely different space, and um, it was really exciting. And, and then it went, it went a bit strange when, it, you know, it just sort of felt like it was getting a bit out of hand. Um, but um, but you know it was cool because you just take it the way you take it the way it's given. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's what someone told me today. Yeah. Take it take it with the love that it's given, and that's it. And when it's calmed down, you move on. Right. So that's what we've been trying to do. I mean, now of course we're fried. <laughs> yeah. I mean, A year later. Yeah. I mean, you've been touring excessively, and uh, you know it's amazing to to win all those polls and stuff. I, I know that. Both you and Johnny have, you know, have, have responded when people say it's one of the greatest albums ever made. You guys have responded very humbly and said, uh, you know, it's not that great. You know, like people are getting a little bit out of hand. And uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it was more that it simply expressed at a particular moment in time, right. and that was kind of cool. And one of the things I got a biggest kick out of was the fact that it didn't just appeal to the white middle class indie kids of, of Britain, you know, which is it's cool, to, but it was it it was like it appealed to people in the dance community and, and stuff like that and I got a kick out of that you know and it appealed to my parents you know they like you yeah. know so it was that that made it all right you know but I mean it's it's you know it's it's flawed like any record any records flawed you know I mean when we finished the record we we knew every single note of it and every sound and every every you know we just knew it off by heart it was like a nightmare you know <laughs> because it, we'd heard so much so much and I guess we won't know what it's like until we move on and do the next thing anyway, really. We just, so, it was okay. It was, it was pretty good for what it was. Yeah, and it's what it is. Yeah, it absolutely is. And it's one of those things, I guess, sometimes it definitely it takes time. You have to reflect your, two years later to see how you feel. Yeah, and you've got, you got, you got to sort of keep yourself in check because if you start, if you start questioning it too much, it's like this big black hole, you know, and there's been there's been many black holes we could have fallen down this year, and that's yeah. that was the biggest one. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Anyway, uh, right now let's take a look at the video that uh, you picked, a great one too, by the way, from uh, the Benz album. It's uh, Street Spirit Fade Out. Hey, it's Matt Pinfield. I'm back with Tom York of Radiohead on 120 Minutes. Tom, we were speaking earlier about uh, you know the respect uh, level and the spectrum, the different spectrum of people that have reacted to the band recently. And we talked about the dance community. And uh, originally Massive Attack, the Bristol guys, were mm. supposed to uh, remix the whole album. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think their manager gave them a kick up the ass and said, uh, could you finish your record, please? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do yours first. We need another one out. And I think, I th I think that's, that's where it was left, really. Yeah. But it was cool. It was cool to, um, um, uh, 3D was, was uh, on the stage at Glastonbury when we played. And it was really, it was good. It was good to see his face in, in the midst of all the hell that was breaking loose that night, and there was there was him, and he 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 had some party that weekend, and he'd, he'd hired one of those um, you cut you, what do you call them um, uh, station wagon things like the big things that people live in. Yeah, you know, kind of like those big Winnebago. Trail Winnebago, RVs, yeah. yeah. He had a Winnebago, and he had a party, and of course the mud was like ten foot thick, or whatever, you know, completely stuck. Yeah. 
uh, him and his mates got really, really drunk, left the sound system on all night, w wiped out the batteries. And he was like running around trying to avoid them because he didn't want to tell them that they were in fact stuck for the whole weekend, they couldn't get out. And he was standing <laughs> on the side of the stage going, oh, oh no. <laughs> like this, really nervous. Oh, it was really cool. It worked out cool. Yeah, it? it was, they're just, they're good people, you know. Yeah, and they're really, so you know, awful, kind of forefathers too of that whole Bristol sound, you know, and really kick things out. Let me uh, ask you, I've heard that you might collaborate with them on something this summer when you get back home. Well, I think you know, they're going to be stuck in their record now, which is a shame. I mean, at one time I was going to do something on their album, but I didn't have time and my, my brain was too fried, so I was really gutted about that. Yeah. That's one of those things, though. But um, um, this thing um, with Shadow and James Lavelle, yeah. the Uncle Project, that's going to yeah. come out pretty soon. That DJ Shadow record, yeah. right? The latest it's going to be out in September, but hopefully before that. I'm hearing some great things about that. I know That'd that you're good. on a track and yeah. Mike D and from the Beastie yeah. Boys and... Um, Jason used to from Metallica playing some stuff yeah. together. There's all these different things going on. Yeah. It was a fun project to work up. Yeah. It was actually done before, uh, after the Benz and before OK Computer. No, right? no, it was done. Um, it was done on the first first tour. We we, we took two days off. Um, oh, the first tour. On the first tour on OK Computer when oh, we were in okay. San Francisco. Oh, okay. We went up to uh, some studio in the hills owned by Lucas. George yeah, Lucas. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was really cool. It was really good two days. It was brilliant. Yeah. Josh just came in with these records and said, oh, I've got this thing. And we just went from there. It was brilliant. Yeah, I look forward to checking that out. Let's check out the top ten uh, videos in Alternative around America this week, and then we'll be back with more of Tom in a little bit. Hey, it's Matt Pinville of Radio City Music Hall with Tom York of Radiohead. And it's good to be back with you, Tom. Now, uh, let's talk a bit about this track that you did in your track for the Avengers soundtrack. Uh, oh, no, we didn't. Oh, it's not happening No, now? we ditched it. Because we were so fried. We were so messed up. And we went in and we tried to do a track, and we just couldn't do it. It was it was actually a really uh, really difficult period of time. I mean, uh, uh, for us, I mean, we had a five week break, and you know all the all the shit was just coming to the surface, and it was all a bit weird. And we tried to go into the studio and do this old track that we had, and it just didn't happen at all. It was really, you know, we were at a real low point after yeah. it, and we had to scrap the whole idea. Was it called Big Boots? Yeah. And what was it? Was Worms will come for you, Big Boots. Yeah. And when was it written? Was it written like around the Pablo Honey time? Or was yeah, it? Yeah, it was quite an early song. Uh, it was written during the Benz. It was one that didn't make it onto the Benz. We couldn't find the proper way into it or whatever. Um, it's just one of those things. It's really weird. It's very weird to. Um, it's the nature of what you do. You know, you're essentially a recording artist, and sometimes it doesn't work. Right. You know? And you're not going to do it for the sake of getting it no. out. And then, I went, and then after that, I went on holiday to Venice for three days, hopefully as a break. Yeah. And I just got followed <laughs> everywhere I went. Yeah. It was really weird. Yeah. Not a good time. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I'm sorry to hear that. But uh, oh, maybe eventually sometime you get to record it if you feel up yeah, to Yeah, uh, that's the thing. You know, songs have a, a time when you're supposed to record them. Yeah. That, that's, that's, and, and, and it's kind of like we were walking around the studio going, actually, hang on, we're just making an advert for a movie, aren't we? This is a bit wrong, isn't it? Yeah. I don't blame you, actually. So, uh, anyway, more with Radiohead, but first, a video from the band you're touring with, Spiritual yeah. And uh, they, it's really cool. They've been playing at a lot of high-altitude places these days, <laughs> too. Right? From ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space. Here's electricity on 120 Minutes. Hey, it's Matt Pinfield. Stick around, because I'll be back with more conversation with Tom York of Radiohead, and we're going to check out their latest video. So stay with us. Hey, it's Matt Pinfield. Welcome back to 120 Minutes. I'm here with Tom York of Radiohead. Now, Tom, the new video for No Surprises uh, was actually directed by a friend of yours, and I think we're yeah. gonna, this is one of those t rare times we're gonna actually show you the director. This is him. Mr. G. Mr. G, Mr. Grant G. <laughs> How you doing? Now, uh, your relationship, he's, <laughs> he's a friend of the band's, um, and actually has been touring kind of documenting. No, what, what, what happened, well. what happened, right, is um, uh, at the beginning of the project, um, we, we had this launch in Barcelona, which was like a bit of a nightmare, and, and um, there was a loose idea of like, well, we should make a film of it, you know, and and um, and Grant really sort of picked up on on what was happening, and it was really exciting, and, and because um, it, it's kind of it, it's kind of trying to see from inside the bubble out, and yeah. and how scary it is, and how alarming it is, and and it went from there really, and and Grant's been with us for most of the year. And then um, a particular point when we were, you know, 
um, we were trying to look for a video for no surprises. You know, Grant, Grant came up with this idea. And uh, one of the things that appealed to me at the, t at the time was the idea that, um, I mean, a lot of the suggestions that we were getting through for no surprises were very much along the lines of, um, you know, man walks down the street, no expression in his face, things fly past, things blow up, carries on walking type thing. Kind of like sweet symphony, you know. Right? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, and, and just, and it was like that, it didn't express the trouble in the song enough. It was too, uh, it was too pleasing, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I love the idea of, of uh, going over the, the thing of, of just the face and the screen, one shot. And the water. Know, and the water. And it was just, I, I just like the idea of, I mean, there are a lot, for example, in Europe, there are a lot of uh, uh, pubs where you always have MTV playing. Right. Like, you know, and, and, it, and it's, you know, the faces, uh, uh, I just like the idea of my face leering out the corner in the bar, me having a drink and this guy drowning himself or whatever, you know, some guy drowning himself in the corner of the, one of these terrible disco bars they have with MTV <laughs> playing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm into that yeah, one. Right, exactly. Sorry. Alarm him a little bit. Oh, but you're on TV, aren't you? Oh, dear. Yes, I, oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? No, not really. Right, but yeah. You and I have had a relationship for a while, so that's <laughs> all right. Remember? We've been friends for a long time, is what I mean. You know what I mean? Anyway, more with Radiohead, but first, <laughs> let's check out your lady. Hey, it's Matt Pinfield here with Tom York of Radiohead. Tom, uh, you know, one of the things at the end of last year, we always ask uh, artists what their favorite videos are because they have to get involved in the process of making videos. and. Undoubtedly, uh, Radiohead came up as the number one mo m most loved. I mean, it, it could have been different things. Could have been Paranoid Android, Just, or Fake Plastic Trees, but there's always something people really find. Um, how involved with the video making process has the band been? I mean, there's always been a quality control without a question, because the videos are, are incredible. And there's that new thing, what's it called? Seven television commercials? So yeah, that's just like, you know, a comp of. of of the, the recent and best ones. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. Video but they, you know, but they are television commercials that... Yeah. Um, uh, the thing is we don't have as much involvement as... I think it's really... I guess what we try and do anyway is... is... do you know, whoever's, whoever's doing the video, um, um, try and just be as encouraging as we can and try and give them as much free reign as we can. Yeah. Because, you know, I... You know, I just I just don't know enough about it, really. I, yeah. You know, it's it's kind of obviously extremely stressful thing because um, personally, I I can't get involved. I don't understand it, and I don't have an eye for it. Um, you know, but it. Well, I you know I think it's brilliant, but it's you know every band knows how stressful it is making videos. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? what I mean. I mean, for example, like you know, Paranoid Android. You know, I just the the only the only thing I had for that. Was was um, the only sort of spark I had was was a bit in the film being there. Do you know the film yeah, being there, of course, right? Peter There's a bit in that where he's sitting there with a big fat remote control yeah. in the limo, and he's flicking between the channel, and this this thing comes on, and it kind of looks a bit like um, Sesame Street. I think it is Sesame Street. It's one of those. Right. And the combination of that and what's going on, for some reason, that's what I. Th that made sense with Paranoid Android. Right. I mean, how do you translate that? But then, but then at the time that we were finishing the album, um, uh, uh, Stanley Donwood and me were finishing the artwork, and we were getting getting out of our heads every night yeah. and putting on this Magnus Carlsen video of, right. of Robin, and it was like every night as well. This is Paranoid Android, you know. So we were just lucky because he wanted it to, to do it, you know. I mean, it's the thing is it's so stressful because it's all it's like ah. Where yeah. now, you know? Right, exactly. It's really odd. It's really odd. Yeah, well, let's check that video out right now. It's another one that you picked to show tonight. Paranoid Android from OK Computer, Radiohead on 120 Minutes. It looks really good at 4 in the morning. Hey, it's Matt Pinfield. You're watching 120 Minutes. I'm here with Tom York of Radiohead, and we're at Radio City Music Hall. Tom, you've done an uh, EP, which is really cool. It came out for Airbag and How Am I Driving. And there's five extra tracks on there, like Perlene, uh, Melatonin. Yeah. Melatonin. You know what I mean? I like that uh, one. Palo Alto. Talk, let's talk about those songs. Where are those songs from? Are those things that you've had for a while? Have you written them recently on the road? They were just, they were just B-sides, really. You know, you know, Melatonin was done in, in 10, 15 minutes. You know, it was like, it was like, ah, B-sides, ah. Um, and, um, but actually, the, the, whole, the whole EP for, for, for me and Stanley Donwell was an excuse to do some more artwork.
Right. So, so you pull the stuff off the yeah. British and European singles. Yeah, just so we could do some more artwork. Right. And it's, it's got a really groovy questionnaire inside. Yeah, that's cool. People will enjoy that. And you've released some good live versions of things on the back of some of the singles as well. There was there was a couple. I mean, we 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 always dat all the shows and and so on. And then of course we're too bored to listen to them. But um, uh, Ed Ed went home. And he, he yeah. There's a really cool version of um, Airbag from Berlin that you can get. And it doesn't it just doesn't sound like us at all. It's really weird. It sounds like Joy Division. It's it's really frightening to listen to. It's quite weird. I mean, because we, when we were young, man, you know, when we were younger, we used to listen to our stuff a lot, like, and, and we just got so bored of it. So it's quite a shock to hear it nowadays because how different it is. And different than an airbag. I mean, it's got that kind of Ian Curtis feel to it. You're saying it just goes yeah. Like it's that. really it's it's the, the 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 one on the record's very strung out yeah. and very you know pulled around, and 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 the one live is just really <laughs> kind of gone for just yeah. It's really good. It's yeah. cool. That's great. People should check that out. Um, anyway, we're going to be back with Tom in just a couple of minutes. Uh, right now, let's check out a 120 minutes debut from the Vancouver band known as Pure. They've been making records for a while. You might remember see the latest video from Green Day's Nimrod album right here on 120 minutes. Hey, it's Matt Pinfield back here with Tom York of Radiohead at Radio City Music Hall. Tom, uh, Len, we got together about a year ago on the air here. We talked a bit about the Velvet Goldmine soundtrack, the, uh, which of course is that old Bowie B-side, but. Uh, it's the movie Michael Stipe uh, has been involved with, and and you're friends with Michael as well. What's going on with the movie and the soundtrack? Because fans have been writing and asking when the movie's coming out and when, because uh, they're looking forward to hearing those Roxy music covers you guys did. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I know they've shot it all. I guess they're just putting it together. I guess, no, no, actually, I heard something about, you know, when, when you do a big film like that, it, you have to have like a two or three month... Um, lead up just to do the promotion for it. Yeah. It's like... All the press junkets yeah, and all that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that they were in the midst of that about two months ago. So I guess it'd be fairly soon. Um, but as you say, I mean, it was a year ago, really, that we just did it. And um, it was cool, though. But it, it's not, it doesn't sound like me singing. At all. Yeah, you're doing Brian Ferry, you know? Yeah, I mean, I was like, you know, they were saying, no, no, ham it up, ham it up, you know? Make it more. Uh, so it's, it's quite peculiar uh, listening to it. It's <laughs> people will be excited about it. You know, for those people who might have missed us talking about it last year, what uh, Roxy Music songs did you do again? It was stuff oh, from like For Your Pleasure. God, it wasn't was, it? Um, it was yeah, Two HB. Right. Lady Tron. Right. For the first album. Yeah. And I think it was. Is it? If there is bittersweet me or something. Oh, bittersweet was in the first. Bittersweet from, from like country life. Yeah. Bittersweet. That's really cool. That's the version cool. of Bittersweet is really cool. That's great. Yeah. That's a good Country Life was a great album. Yeah, that cover? It is, yeah. Two women on it. Yeah. <laughs> Back then that well, was Well that's why I don't look at that. I mean, you know. Not that's <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. It's good. When yeah. you when especially when when ten or eleven. You're ten or eleven, you have these two nude women on the cover, exactly. Yeah. I remember going, Wow. You know what I mean? Well, you know, hey we were young. It's good, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Anyway. Right now we've got Green Day with Redundant. I'll be back with more Tom in a little bit. This is from Nimrod. I want to be Tate's Napkin. I'm back here with Tom York of Radiohead at Radio City Music Hall. Tom, there's a new song you're doing live called Big Ideas Don't Get Any. I love that title, by the way, too. That's good, actually. I didn't have a title. Yeah. I wanted to call it, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to call it. Um, when, you, when you get a mortgage in Britain yeah. for your house, you, you, the, in all the adverts for mortgages and so on, they always have this thing at the bottom saying, uh, if, uh, your home is at risk if you do not keep up repayments. I wanted to use that as the title. <laughs> but I'm not sure if it's catchy enough. Yeah, the whole foreclosure idea. Yeah. I That'll just thought it was like, wow, that's the ultimate threat, that is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. taking your home out from under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's talk big about... Idea, what big ideas don't get any. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me a bit about that song. Is it a recent thing that you've written? Um, oh, yeah. it, it's... Again, it's something that we had looking around for ages. It was driving us up the wall, and um, we kind of got it together just before this tour started. And uh, and you know, we just do new songs because otherwise we go mad. Right. Yeah, we just you just get so bored. There's no danger or anything. It's like you know, you're a karaoke machine, and and that gives you something to focus on right. in, in in the set. Um, uh, and it it's all like electric piano, and it's not very us. I mean, it's kind of. It was kind of inspired by um, like all old soul stuff, which for me is like, uh, you know, I don't even really like old soul. I'm not, a, but you know, Phil, Phil and Coz kept hammering on saying it's got to sound like that, and they were right, it's good. 
Yeah, it's cool. Now let's talk about the drugstore thing. There's been all this stuff in the paper about you being nude in the video, and people, a lot of people don't know the drugstore have been actually around for a while. Now. Oh yeah, yeah. They 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 were they were um, officially screwed over by their record company in a spectacular fashion, which I hope they make extremely public, and I hope the record company suffers. Extremely for it. What did they do? You mean the old indie label that they were um, No, there, there was a big. Um, there's an old. They were on the Go Discs. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And and there a lot of a lot of went down and uh, the, the I did the record with them and then they sat on the record and they wouldn't release it and um, and it was a very weird scene. I mean, it's best to ask them really because I. Yeah. You know, so the thing about the nudity in the video was, was completely fabricated by the press. Well, it was it was a. Uh, it was something that we found. Uh, uh, it was uh, it was a, a, a script that we got sent through, and we just thought, "Wow, this is so messed up." You know, it was like um, me and Isabel writhing around in the mud. You know, struggling for something or other, and uh, we just thought, <laughs> "This is this is too funny to let go, really." Yeah. So um, they were like trying to work out how to do a press release for it. No, we just decided that that would be the press release. <laughs> right. But I might be wrong. I mean, all, all I know is I left the studio that day and we'd been laughing about it all day and sort of going, wouldn't it be great? And the next thing I know is like, all these press reports coming back <laughs> saying... It's amazing. So I guess that's what they did. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's funny. You get a good laugh out of it for a while anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. I don't take it too seriously, eh? That's for sure. So um, let's talk about the, the touring and what's going to happen next for the band, are you going to get some time off, or are you going to yeah. stand road for the I mean, our, our, our only obligation, um, we've got these two two nights at Radio City. And, that you've um, done, and now we, we've got the yeah, Tibetan Freedom concert coming up. And that's up. it. Yeah. You know, and then this Tibetan Freedom concert is is our only obligation. Um, other than that, it's clear blue sky. That's great. Yeah. And that was a great show last year, by the way, at the Tibetan Freedom concert. It was a very emotional day. It and was, just, wasn't it? It was really emotional, and it had just a beautiful spirit going on. Yeah, you know, it was around. really quite mind-boggling. <laughs> yeah, it was, I really enjoyed it. Never, never experienced anything like that in my life. Yeah, I mean, I, I really just, I was taken, totally taken by the whole emotional yeah. feeling in the air, and your performance as well. And this, the air, it's in Washington. Yeah, so we're heading down there. That's right, yeah, get the helicopters out. <laughs> All right, Tom, thanks for coming by. It was great to have you. I really enjoyed you being here, man. And if you haven't already, pick up the Grammy Award winning <laughs> OK Computer. We <laughs> said right? Yeah, I don't know what it looks like. We haven't, I haven't seen it yet. I don't blame you. Sometimes the shows aren't just aren't that interesting. Really? Yeah. What, you, didn't you watch it all the way through? No. Oh. I did not. <laughs> anyway, as well as earlier stuff like The Pens and Pablo Honey. Thanks again, Tom. Anyway, coming up next, we've got The Urge from Master of Styles with Nick Hexham from 311 helping him out. It's Jump Right In. Thanks again, man. Cheers, man. I want to say thanks again to Tom of Radiohead for coming by. He only agreed to do two things during this whole tour, and that was 120 Minutes and Space Ghosts. We're really happy to have him here. We'll leave you tonight with a special 120 Minutes performance from March of 1996, and this is High and Dry from the Benz from the 120 Minutes archives. I'll see you next Sunday. My guest will be Stabbing Westward. For 120 Minutes, I'm Matt Pinfield. Have a great week.